Benjamin Franklin once said there are only two things certain in this world, death and taxes. That is, unless you're super rich, of course. The richest people in the world aren't just good at making lots of money. They're also really good at keeping that money far away from the government. So taxes aren't much of a certainty anymore. And as soon as Queen Elizabeth shares her immortality serum with the rest of the world, Benjamin Franklin's quote will be officially retired. So today we're going to be taking a look at some of the ways the richest CEOs in the world ensure the government won't be funding any public projects with their money anytime soon. Soon. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, make sure you have subscribed and ring that bell so you never miss a video from us. Let's face it, nobody likes paying taxes. Some of us would gladly live in the woods or in the middle of the ocean if it meant avoiding tax season. Don't just take my word for it. People already live on floating ships that travel across the ocean, free from taxation. Out there in international waters where your only worry is the sun, the sea, and the occasional pirate attack. Not the jolly Neverland pirate types either. Jeff Bezos, a man worth $205 billion, paid a true tax rate of zero. 0.98% between 2014 and 2018, despite his wealth growing by $100 billion in that period, while the average American paid a rate of 14.6%. How on earth does he and other incredibly wealthy CEOs manage to do this? Well, they've got a few mostly legal tricks up their sleeves. Getting paid in equity. You've probably heard about how some of the richest people in the world get paid ridiculously low salaries compared to their net worth. How Jeff Bezos has a base salary of $81,000, or Mark Zuckerberg's base salary of $1, or how Elon Musk refuses a salary altogether. The fact that these are some of the richest people in the world is enough to have you scratch a hole in your head out of confusion. It turns out the reason their salaries are so low isn't just to make them look cool, it's because when you're super wealthy and own a company, getting paid in equity is just better, hands down. Not only is there a chance the company's equity might increase in value over time, but equity also isn't taxable unless you sell it. Why would you choose to get paid through a taxable medium like a salary when you can accumulate equity? So when Elon Musk refuses to get paid a single dime as long as he's one of Tesla's shareholders he's getting paid in equity meaning no taxes on his income and as long as Tesla keeps performing well he gets paid in freshly minted stock skyrocketing his net worth you might be thinking he can't just keep a stockpile of equity forever he'll have to sell it eventually and then the government will swoop in and tax it like they're supposed to well buckle up because this is just the beginning you thought avoiding taxes would be as simple as not getting paid a salary but it goes deeper than that the buy borrow die technique now not every wealthy person is ready Ready to risk a visit from the government, so they tend to avoid blatant acts of tax evasion or taking your money to the laundromat. But that doesn't mean they don't do some incredibly shady stuff. Although depending on where you stand, the buy, borrow, die technique is either incredibly shady or a stroke of genius. So what even is it? You know how average people like you and me need something silly like money to, well, survive? So you get a job and you find yourself some income. Yeah, the ultra wealthy aren't too hung up on plebeian stuff like a source of income. They can live lavishly, essentially on borrowed cash alone. Step one, buy. They either buy assets like Elon Musk did with Tesla, build their own company to acquire assets like Jeff Bezos, or inherit a lot of wealth like Francois Betancourt Meyer. As long as they don't sell these assets, as mentioned earlier, they don't have to pay taxes on them. Step two, they borrow. Most of us dread the possibility of having to put up our property as collateral, but something most of us do out of desperation, the ultra wealthy use it as an easy way to avoid taxes. They do this by borrowing against their holdings. Remember that untaxed equity or assets I mentioned earlier, it turns out that when you have a lot of it and a really large net worth, the banks are more than willing to give you a rather sweet deal. Just ask Oracle co-founder Larry Ellison, who disclosed that he had used $250 million of his Oracle share to secure a $9.7 billion personal line of credit. Or for a better example of avoiding taxes, ask Elon Musk. He put up a massive amount of his equity in Tesla and SpaceX as collateral for loans, avoiding what would have been a 20% capital gains tax if he sold it instead. According to ProPublica, from 2014 to 2018, Musk had a true tax rate of 3.27 percent, while the average American tax rate was 14.6 percent. Step three, die. Yes, the ultra wealthy have even devised a way to avoid taxes even in death. Really, all this left is just the dying part. Till then, though, there are a few ways post-mortem taxes on your property can be avoided. The super wealthy could use complicated trusts, philanthropic foundations, their heirs can inherit stocks and other assets, or do what some American billionaires do and simply just move to a state without estate taxes, which exists for some reason. And the cycle of buy borrow and die starts all over again. And this is just one of the more creative ways rich people avoid taxes. Some might argue the government isn't competent enough to handle these taxes anyway. Either way, there are a couple more because no matter what side you're on, you can at least appreciate that there's a lot of ways to not pay taxes. Charity. 
Most countries in the world like to incentivize charitable donations. Thanks to that, money donated to charities is usually not taxable. Big surprise, a lot of very wealthy people often have a charitable foundation or two. Something like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but shadier, which to be fair isn't saying much, but we're talking about tax avoidance here. The charity foundations themselves aren't taxed, and whatever you donate to them can be counted as a charitable contribution and opens you up for a charitable deduction on your taxes. Unintended. You basically can donate anything to these charities and it counts as a charitable contribution. Land, vehicles, you name it. And as the head of the charitable foundation, you can use these assets. For charity, wink. A pretty good example of this would be the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, an organization launched by none other than, you guessed it, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, Lauren Chan, for the purpose of advancing human potential and promoting equality. But there's a bit of a catch with this charity. Ordinarily, if Zuckerberg wants to donate a very large sum of money, he would have to sell some of his stock. That sale would be taxed, and he would donate the proceeds to a charity. Meaning that if Zuckerberg wanted to, he could choose not to donate cash, but donate stock instead. And thanks to the fact that charities like the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative have a status as a tax-qualified charity, donated stock won't get taxed no matter how big the gain. And on top of that, Zuckerberg would also get credit on his tax return for the stock he donated. It really does pay to be charitable. Tax havens. If you can't be bothered using complicated schemes to avoid paying taxes, you can just pack up and move to a tax haven. Like living in the middle of the ocean, tax havens aren't very interested in taxing your wealth. You can move to Monaco, the Cayman Islands, Dubai, or the Bahamas. Countries that don't sweat the small stuff like income taxes. Just ask Britain's wealthiest billionaire, Jim Ratcliffe. He's certainly enjoying his stay in Monaco, and even if he isn't, he certainly must be loving the $4 billion in tax payment Monaco is saving him. He's not the only one, too. Nearly a third of British billionaires have moved to a tax haven as well. These countries are usually super expensive to live in, though. The cost of property in Monaco, for example, is about $105,000 per square meter, making sure that nearly 35 out of of every 100 people in Monaco is a millionaire. But if moving your whole life abroad is too much of a hassle for you, then you can just do what Google, Facebook, and Apple do and send your money abroad. Let's just say that thanks to Ireland, these massive globe-spanning companies pay much less to the U.S. government than you would think. Or hey, nothing stops you from buying a yacht, sailing into the middle of the ocean, and living free on nature's own tax haven, the Big Blue. Buying art. This next technique is a little bit fancier than everything else we've talked about so far. Owning expensive pieces of art and showing it off is the pinnacle of bourgeois isn't it? At least that's what desperate art dealers in Etsy tell me. The truth is, aside from helping a few starving artists, buying art can help you avoid the tax man if you're wealthy enough to afford it, that is. And here's how. Let's say a piece of modern art is produced. Something groundbreaking like an entire canvas painted a single color. Bold. Pushing the envelope. I know. A savvy art connoisseur who earned $1 million that year would purchase this piece of art for $1 million, which would probably have him roasted by his friends, family, and strangers on the internet, but he's going to have the last laugh. And that's because his $1 million dollar income matches his one million dollar expense, meaning there would be no money left to be taxed. He waits a couple of years, and the worth of the painting increases exponentially to four million dollars, or at least that's what a professional art appraiser would say. He could either take the risk of putting the piece of art on the market and waiting for someone to buy it for its potentially inflated amount, or he instead donates it to a charity or an art foundation. Oh, I meant to say your charity or your art foundation, granting you a four million dollar tax deduction. So you basically pay one million dollars sit on it for a while and use it to save yourself $4 million in taxes down the road. And this is just a conservative estimate. Art pieces can get really expensive, like the painting Orange, Red, and Yellow, sold for $86 million, and it looks, well, like its name. Capital gains versus income tax. Or if everything we've talked about so far is either too complicated, too underhanded, or you're already doing all of them, then you could always try what I call the Warren Buffett Special. Warren Buffett has come under fire for doing precisely the sort of techniques we've talked about to avoid shelling out to the government. His tax rate is even lower than his secretary's. How does he manage to pull that off? Well, he has quite a few techniques up his sleeve. You don't get a true tax rate of 0.1%, according to ProPublica, by simply hiring the best accountants around. But we won't be talking about Buffett's many tricks. Instead, we'll focus on one. And that's how Warren Buffett chooses to be taxed. Let's just say there's a reason billionaires like to avoid income tax. Warren Buffett barely pays income tax, but instead pays a capital gains tax, which isn't a tax on your salary, but a tax you pay on the profit you make from selling stuff like stock investments or real estate. As it turns out, when you're wealthy enough to afford these things, your tax rate is paradoxically lower. But Buffett has taken the giving pledge, promising to give all his wealth away. So that money is going to get distributed somehow. I mean, you could technically do the Buffett special if you tried. You just need a few million, start or invest in a booming business, purchase enough stock to never need a salary ever again. Easy, right? Conclusion. These are some of the ways the richest CEOs have managed to keep the government out of their pockets. And these are just the legal methods, too.
too. That's not to say any of these CEOs dabble in criminal activity. There are just that many ways to avoid paying taxes. Speaking of which, I better stop here for now. We're dangerously close to boring economics class territory. So what do you think about tax evasion? Super cool strat? Or do you prefer to have your roads paved? <laughs> oh, and if you've learned a new way to avoid paying taxes, well, oops. Nonetheless, if you enjoyed this video, comment below and do leave us a like. Check out the King Luxury channel for more videos all about luxury. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.